quick discussion about this in the office as I ran out of the door, and everyone said, is, th is that really the first book that's really considered this in depth? To which my response was, yes, maybe we're slightly overdue in, in this, I think. Um, but clearly it's very timely. It's also timely because we are quite a number of years into investments in social protection now, and it is a good point to start reflecting back and look at the evidence, which I think the book does really well. Um, so even though it's, it is arguably very overdue, at least we're at a point now where we can be starting to pull that evidence together. Um, so I think it's a really welcome contribution to the debates and, and the genuine grappling, I think, that we all do around how to do um, development more broadly well, but also how to do social protection well with partners across across the world in very different contexts. One of the things that's great, and um, Stephen Devereux picks it up in his forward, that it's really it's practical as well. So it has the practical examples and some of the practical tools that can be used to really think about this. And I'll come back to this, because I think this is quite a key aspect of how we need to move that forward. So I wanted to focus just on, on three sort of sets of reflections. One about why it's a good time, uh, particularly for us, to be thinking about this. Secondly, a, a bit of reflection on why why we don't do this thinking enough and why we are where we are in terms of some of the critiques that you're posing here and also some of the entry points that we think about and that we would welcome a much wider discussion and, and engagement on so the first one this is definitely this is obviously high up our agenda you've noted rebecca that you know, the secretary of state our new relatively new secretary of state um, has really prioritized investments in um, gender equality, women and girls, putting women and girls' rights at the centre of what we do um, in terms of protecting the gains, but also very much an empowerment agenda around voice, choice and control across a range of different areas, whether it's political, social and economic. And social protection really sits in the nexus of those in many ways um, that she's very aware of. Um, so it's really important in terms of a contribution to thinking about how we best drive progress in gender equality and gender equality in a way that is that reaches the poorest and marginalized and excluded women as well uh, so seeing women not just as a homogenous group but thinking about different types of women and different vulnerabilities within um, the sort of demographic that is women and girls um, and secondly obviously we continue to be a big supporter of social protection social transfers um, within that wider agenda um, across um, DFID and across the world with a real emphasis on maximizing the coverage maximizing the political buy-in and really ensuring that those systems that are required to deliver um, social protection mechanisms are sustainable so really get we we've, we've made a lot of progress as you've said I mean the numbers are significant now and really quite impressive but making sure that they are sustainable systems is obviously absolutely key to, to moving this forward but the second element obviously is that making sure that they are effective systems as well and that they're delivering for the people that they're designed to to deliver for and in ways that um, deliver that in the best way possible so really sort of multiple objectives and I think on that last one social protection generally is a very effective tool from a social policy and social development perspective is a very important tool for raising some of these issues around marginalization, who benefits, who doesn't, who's locked out of opportunities, particularly economic opportunities, and getting that into the political discourse, regardless of how much space there is sometimes to have that discussion, I think. Um, and then there is a lot of interest at the moment within DFID and obviously beyond here of actually what are those linkages between the two and how do we best try and build some of those bridges that I think have not been particularly strong to date. So reading the book made me think about why are we here and what are, why are some of the reasons, what are some of the reasons why we have not been so um, joined up essentially on, on some of these different agendas. And I think it does require quite a lot of self-reflection on both parts in terms of those who've worked on social protection over the years, those who work on gender and those of us who work on that nexus as well. Um, and I do think it's quite important to think about how we work as well as what, what we work on and, and um, what we've done over time. I mean, one thing I think that there is a question about the level of engagement that there has been potentially between different groups who've had particular interests. Um, and the level of engagement, for example, in Ministry of uh, Women's Affairs or in particular programmes that are more gender focused with the social protection agenda has been patchy, I think, over time. And I think, you know, we collectively need to recognise that. Equally, on the social protection side, um, I think that 
we all have to recognise there are a multiple set of drivers that drive social protection over the years. And, you know, th whether it's a humanitarian response, whether it's food security, whether it's to increase health outcomes or education outcomes, whether it's to be HIV um, sensitive, whether it's to be child sensitive, whether now it's to be climate change sensitive, there are layers and layers of expectations on these programmes um, that quite often struggle to sort of grapple with what should we be focusing on, how can we make them the most effective and be sensitive to all of those different really important and obviously not competing but different perspectives um, so the expectations are high um, and on the social protection side I think that there's there's some questions that continue to go on and have been there for a long time but how do we really maximize the effectiveness of these um, I think the second area in terms of those questions I it picks up on your point exactly about the political economy and I, that chapter is a really important chapter and you know we need to to recognize that that it is a policy arena that we're working in and there are political decisions that are made in in different countries around this so that what what a program or a, a policy framework will look like in any country <laughs> is a combination of driven by evidence of need of um, of the political economy that's playing out and obviously that does reflect probably quite clearly in terms of this agenda societies and systems reflect the societies that they operate in and that was the same for the Ministry of Finance for the Ministry of Women's Affairs, for the Ministry of Labour, whoever else is involved in these programmes. So it's not surprising in, in, in certain areas that, that gender is maybe less of a priority or less thought about if that's a, a wider social norm that plays out within a political sphere. And I think we need to be quite cognizant of that, and I think that chapter is really welcome in that regard. It also touches on really well around the institutional capacity that we deal with here. So not only are some of the institutions um, and sectors and ministries who are delivering social um, protection relatively weak, but also the Ministry of uh, Women's Affairs or the equivalent, their ability to engage with those different sectors is also often quite um, lacking. And s the way that those um, debates are had and how things drive forward obviously look very different in very different countries and different institutional setups are found. And I think there does need to be a very flexible way of looking at those institutional setups rather than assuming that it does, for example, need to be the Women's um, Affairs Ministry that plays a necessarily bigger part or, or that there's a sort of prescription of what is a good institutional setup for that. But it is important to be very cognizant of the way that the institutional capacity plays out, I think, in, in these areas. Um, in terms of entry points, there are a number that, um, that I think are really important and a number of which you touch on and the book contributes to it in, in many ways. The first one is evidence, um, clearly more broadly, um, and investing in, continuing to invest in good impact assessment and evaluation work that really starts to ask the right questions. Um, we've recently put out a, a new um, evaluation strategy for our social protection investments more broadly that really does try and prioritise women's empowerment and outcomes for women at different levels in different ways uh, being a, an important area for us to track and one of those strategic questions that we really need to be building the evidence base on. The second element of evidence, I think, touches on the work that you've been doing with us on uh, beneficiary monitoring as well, the sort of monitoring evidence as much as the, the bigger, sort of more research-heavy uh, evaluation or ex-post evaluation um, that provides that information as to who is actually benefiting, are the people benefiting that we thought would benefit in the way that we thought they would, and actually being able to then adjust programs and uh, potentially to take account of any positive or, or potentially negative benefits that are coming through and how do you get women's voices into that um, and girls voices into that as relevant is is really important so I think uh, the better the evidence base that we have um, the the better we'll be able to move forward equally people have picked up on program policy design I think one of the key things is making that loop from the evidence and the evaluations in particular into design processes and actually thinking about um, the way that we pull together information to inform design, recognising all those multiple pressures and drivers and the nutrition, health, education, etc. outcomes that are all expected of those programmes, but really looking at what should we be doing in terms of understanding the local context that these programmes are operating in. What are they trying to achieve for different people? Being very clear about who and what they are trying to do as their primary objectives and not overloading everything there but really recognising how this might play out for different people in that particular context. 
um, and being aware of what some of those positive and negatives might be, but drawing on the evidence base. So better sort of social analysis and social understanding and appraisal at the beginning of the project that brings in some of these ideas into the mainstream project design as opposed to it sitting somewhere else and being sort of advocated for. But really getting it into the heart of the design is really important. Um, the third area around um, entry points was a reflection around instruments and making sure that this is really tangible. Um, I think that there is a sometimes a danger to, to stick in languages. Every sector and set of priorities in development have their own languages. And it's very easy to sit and sort of talk in your own language and then say, why does nobody understand? Um, which obviously is not what you do. <laughs> but it is really easy to do that. And what's one of the ways that we need to do is build really good multidisciplinary teams that find really tangible ways forward. And some of the contributions that the book makes and the things that we need to really continue to do is be really tangible. When you're sitting at the table and talking about how to make um, a so social protection instrument and or wider policy framework <laughs> more gender sensitive, what does that actually mean? What does it look like? What does it mean for particular instrument choices perhaps? What does it mean in terms of how that program might roll out? It may be a how rather than a what. And it may be, as you've picked up as well in the book, this issue around the combinations and the linkages, recognising that it's generally packages of interventions or policies that make the difference. It's not one silver bullet that's suddenly going to achieve everything for everyone. So being really quite sophisticated but very tangible about what that actually means rather than sort of sticking in the, the terminology that we sort of maybe fall back to within our disciplinary areas. Um, and then finally, this, this issue about institutional capacity and really thinking about this uh, um, harder, I think, around how do we collectively um, enable those linkages to be built in a way that actually both doesn't just look at the delivery of any particular instrument within social protection, but actually puts that in a context of a wider social policy framework as well. Um, and sits this very much within that broader discussion about how does a country um, and set of actors want to really benefit the poorest people in that society and to be able to drive particular changes, um, societal changes, including perhaps um, for many areas the empowerment of women. So I think that the challenges are clearly huge, but I think um, certainly the book makes a really good contribution in terms of reflecting on those challenges and setting some of the ways forward. And it is a really ongoing debate, and I think the more discussion that we can have that brings together these, the different sort of streams of people who work on these different aspects of social policy, from social protection and, and a gender angle, um, the better, really. And we need to be able to actually find the ways forward that are manageable um, rather than endlessly talking about the things that we're not doing, but let's find some ways forward that are really tangible and manageable and start really profiling those <coughs> programs that are making the difference, whether it is the BIS program in Pakistan or Ghana and LEAP and um, Opportunidades in, in Mexico, Underst profiling the, the, the work, but also understanding why and what's really driven that and, and what might be transferable and what might not. But let's start celebrating those successes as well as they emerge. Thanks. Thank you very much indeed.